With thousands of visitors arriving into the islands, every county is facing their own set of challenges, from long lines to educating tourists about their own set of rules. So how is Kauai County dealing with all of this? Joining us this morning is Kauai County Mayor Derek Kamakami. Good morning, Mayor. How are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. I'm doing great. It's, uh, it's a beautiful morning from where I'm sitting, and um, we're going to get to another day. So I look forward to it. Now, Mayor, what's been the biggest challenge since opening up tourism last Thursday? Because I know there were some long lines. I think the biggest challenge has just been um, opening up uh, with what you would call the new normal. So there's been some confusion. Um, the state's been working hard to make adjustments as we move along. And, uh, you know, we're starting to address some of the issues that we've brought up. Uh, and I think a lot of the uh, visitors coming in, um, they need to expect that there are going to be some inconveniences because uh, travel just doesn't look the same as they're used to. Now, Kauai County has a voluntary post-arrival testing program in place. Can you explain how that works and how it's going so far? So it's going positive so far. Uh, right now, uh, these uh, voluntary testing program is designed to uh, be targeted towards returning residents that are coming back from the mainland. Um, they can get a free test Monday through Saturday at our Kauai War Memorial Convention Hall. Of course, Saturdays have uh, shortened hours of operation. And for visitors, there's an incentive program uh, where they can come in and get a gift card. Um, they would have to pay for a test, and that uh, is being administered through our AMR partners. Have any results come back positive that you know of? Uh, I'm going to be getting a report today, um, but like anything else, I haven't had anything substantial come to my email, which is usually how I check, but uh, every day we get a brief update. So, so far, things look positive. Now, how do you educate visitors of the county rules? Because a lot of locals are frustrated that visitors are not wearing a mask, and I saw that two local restaurants are not welcoming visitors. Uh, I think the way that we are going to have to educate visitors is just taking a broad approach to our visitor industry partners. Uh, we created a video um, that is going to be played at the Ligui Airport in the baggage claim area, really spelling out that uh, Koi is a mask-wearing community. People are coming from all corners of the United States. Some of them have uh, more strict uh, mandates on mask-wearing, and some of them are more liberal. Um, so when they land on Kauai, they should understand that the best way to enjoy Kauai is to live like the locals do. And, um, you know, as, as far as uh, the confusion, um, we just continue to work with uh, communicating uh, with all people, and that includes our own residents. How concerned are you that maybe cases could spike? Because currently you guys are in Tier 4. You guys also have a tier system, sort of like Oahu, and that the more cases would push you guys into tier three? Sure, so we always have a general concern. Um, I would say that that is going to exist on a daily basis because there are so many things that are out of our control. How disciplined is our community going to be as far as adhering to basic health guidelines that we've presented? How will visitors um, respect our island as they start to arrive on Kauai? Uh, and we do have a tiered system. It's based on the average daily case count for the week and positivity rate. But we also have built in a level of flexibility to make sure that um, we're using the best health information and data because if we can quickly contain an outbreak, um, that's one thing to consider. Um, but if we start seeing numbers that look like it is community spread, um, that would require... Uh, moving into a different tier uh, a little quicker. And finally, Mayor, you got to help me out here because Puka Dog was just named the state's top dog, hot dog, and one of the top 50 in the United States by Food & Wine magazine. Can you explain to me what makes it so ono? Because I've never had one. Oh, we're huge fans of Puka Dog. Like, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we had a little panic within our family, but they moved uh, down to Brennecke's. So um, we thought that they'd shut down, but they just said relocated. What makes Puka Dog special is the people. 
I mean, the people put their love into providing a unique uh, way to eat a hot dog, and you just got to experience it for yourself. But I'd say the, the variety of unique uh, local mustards and relishes really separate. I mean, you got papaya relish, you got mango relish, banana relish, and of course the roll is just to die for. Because I understand it comes with like a sweet bread roll and all these different sauces. Do you have a favorite sauce or combination? Uh, I forget what the actual name is, but it's the mango. It's the mango sauce. I like it spicy. Uh, I like that spicy aioli that they put in there. Uh, it's some sort of magical sauce. <laughs> but uh, like my wife and daughter, they love the veggie dogs. I, I don't know how they do it, but um, that's what they order. I, I am more of a traditional carnivorous type of hot dog eater. All right, because Puka Dog making national headlines. Top hot dog in the state, top 50 in the U.S. All right, there you have it. There, Derek Kawakami, thank you always for joining us. and. Dropping all that good knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, for now, let's send things over to Kelly. Morning, Kel.